Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. There we go. Uh, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. And so, with the weather, uh, we're a small but uh, warm group together. And uh, just some announcements. First of all, today is Food Bank Sunday. And we have quite a few uh, goods out there in the, uh, the vestibule of the parish hall. If you have forgotten yours, you can still bring it in. Uh, also, announcement for tomorrow, the call committee will be meeting, the first meeting of the call committee, at 1.30 in the parish hall. And we will be in Zoom meeting contact with the associate to the bishop, uh, Pastor Jason Assestein. So it's, a, it's an important meeting. Now, the call committee was elected by the council last Tuesday. And the call committee members are John Schatz, Bonnie Chapulis, Ken Nelson, myself as chair, Jeanette Ostrom, Ginger Whitman, and one alternate, uh, Robert Mitchell. And I would encourage members of the congregation, if you have thoughts about uh, calling pastor, if you have questions, feel free to contact one of those call committee members. Um, this is the last Sunday in Epiphany. Uh, next Sunday is Transfiguration Sunday, and our green pyramids will be changed over to dazzling white. And uh, we have a guest preacher next Sunday I think all of you may be familiar with, although he's never been here before. His name is Dave Rye. He is uh, of broadcast, uh, television broadcast fame, um, and was the anchor person on Channel 8 News for years. He also is a Lutheran LPA, graduated in the class just before Judy and me. And so uh, we would encourage you to tell your friends and uh, neighbors that he is going to be preaching and he has a very good reputation on preaching. So Transfiguration Sunday, next Sunday. And then keep in mind that we are coming quickly up to Lent. Uh, February 17th is Ash Wednesday, and we will have Ash Wednesday services on February 17th at 6.30 p.m. with Pastor Leverton officiating. So circle that on your calendar. Following that, we will be having midweek Lenten services at 6.30 all through Lent using the Holden Evening Prayer. Um, I want to just say one more thing. Today, uh, Judy Manweiler, our LPA and newest member at Emmanuel, was scheduled to preach. However, the roads prevented her from coming here, so I will be delivering her sermon. But it's, uh, it's great to have uh, Judy as a new member here. So I think that's all the announcements, unless I've missed something. Uh, for the you, good of the order, yes, would you, Georgette. Would you uh, tell us who the call committee is again? The call committee is John Schatz, okay. Bonnie Chapolis, Ken Nelson, myself, Jeanette Ostrom, Ginger Whitman, and as the alternate, Robert Mitchell. Okay. If there are no other announcements, we will have our prelude. And then, Sandy, what have you prepared for us as we enter worship? My shepherd will supply my need. Perfect. Let's gather our thoughts and uh, uh, ready ourselves for worship.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from sin, from our sin, to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called LPA of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We gather with our first hymn, Christ Be Our Light. That's hymn number 715, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 5. <laughs> Let us pray to the Lord. Oh. 
worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. They shall run and not be weary. 
They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the psalm is to be read responsibly. I'll read the unbold thing. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. The, the Lord rebuilds Jerusalem and gathers the exile of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord counts the number of the stars and calls them all by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to God's wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving and make music upon the harp to our God. Who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth, making grass to grow upon the lands. God provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they cry. God is not impressed by the might of a horse, and has no pleasure in the speed of a runner, but finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord, and those who wait God's steadfast love. Hallelujah! This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The second lesson is 1 Corinthians 9, 16-23. <clears throat> If I proclaim the gospel, it gives me no ground for boasting. For an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if it's not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became one as one under the law, though I myself not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I may win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so I may share in his blessings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for our gospel affirmation. <laughs> and there he prayed. 
And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I invite you to pray with me. O oh God, our refuge and strength, from whom all goodness comes, we lay our tasks and our ills and sorrows at your feet and ask that we would be made wholly open to your perfect wisdom. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It may seem to us a long time already since Advent, the beginning of our church year, since Christmas Day and the opening of gifts and stuffing ourselves with feasting. A long time to get the New Year and the Epiphany and a long time to get to today, Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> Compare the secular passing of time to our Sunday services, where we hardly get beyond the good news of the Savior, and we are on to John the Baptist preaching repentance. Then the promised one who is coming is here and being baptized, and the heavens open to declare that Jesus is divine. Jesus announces that the good news of God's reign has arrived, and he, Jesus, begins gathering these fisher folks, urging them to leave their boats and follow him. No time to breathe yet. No time out. As last week, we were at the synagogue on the Sabbath where people were astounded, astonished, and amazed to hear Jesus' authoritative teaching and witness his power to exorcise demons. Touchdown! And we are still in the first quarter of our church year. Now we pick up where last week left us off. Have you not heard? Do you not know? We are sure that the word of Jesus' teaching and exorcism is racing throughout the community grapevine of Capernaum. And immediately as Jesus leaves the synagogue and enters the home of Simon Peter and Andrew, we learn that Simon Peter, that is Peter's mother-in-law, is in bed with a fever. In the original Greek, the word used comes from a word more akin to burning. My mother used to put her hand on my forehead to feel if I had a fever. Our translation sells it very short. She is sick. In a world without antibiotics or vaccines, this is serious. She is a valued and loved member of the household, and she is very ill. At once, Jesus is told of the situation, and Jesus goes to her, takes her by the hand, and lifts her up, and she is healed. Is this event a foretelling of our eventual resurrection and complete recovery from sin? The Greek verb used to describe Jesus lifting the woman is closely related to the root word for resurrection. It is then after raising her up that the fever leaves her, and then she is healed. 
and she begins to serve her guests and her household. She becomes the first person in Mark's gospel to exemplify true discipleship. Diakonania. Diakonania. It's a hard word for me to pronounce in its Greek. Service to the community. It's the root word from which we get a deacon. Okay? Contemporary culture has often distorted her service into a chauvinistic discussion, which is totally unnecessary and invalid. As women's roles in their households and in their communities were necessary and important and were not put in a place of lesser value. The woman of this time took pride in her place and in her work. We can learn so much from the living Word of God, but it is important to keep historical context in our studies and interpretations. This woman has risen gladly to serve the Lord. She rises to serve the one we hear extolled in the reading of Isaiah and the psalm. Whether it's a man or a woman, do we rise to serve the Lord? The question is worth a time out. But on to the sundown, the end of the Sabbath, the word has certainly spread of Jesus' actions in the synagogue and almost certainly, or most certainly, of the healing of Peter's mother, excuse me, Peter's mother-in-law. Peter had been married. Jesus, and the word of Jesus, has literally gone viral. The needs of the whole town are brought to the feet of Jesus. The overwhelming need for what Jesus has to offer has become apparent, apparent very quickly. At this time in history, illness bears a heavy cost. The ill are unable to work, unable to earn, unable to contribute, making them feel of less value in their society and even in their families. Imagine they're coming by the dozens on crutches or on pallets, sick children in the arms of hopeful parents, the blind led by family members or friends, so many people, so many needs. The search for wholeness is something that we all share, the human condition. And Jesus serves. He moves from the healing of one to the healing of many. These verses tell us of the great power and authority of our Lord. How as he walked the earth, he met the needs of his people. He was willing to do this. Our Lord is merciful, compassionate, sacrificial, a servant. Today a question many people ask is, why didn't God heal my child, or my friend, or my spouse, or my parent, or me? As we read through Mark, we see many more incidences of healing and many more restorations. Why, where are ours? Why isn't everyone healed? I cannot even attempt to answer for God. From my experience and from my own beliefs, I can say whatever our need, when we sincerely turn to God, we will find relief, if not healing. Then strength in and through our God. Knowing who God is and what he can do we need to trust our Lord to do what is right for us and trust Him with our sufferings. Perhaps these great miracles of healing and casting out demons are meant to show us that God is able to meet our deepest needs, the need that isn't visible, the need for complete forgiveness of sins, 
God values each person, each life, each home, each sickbed, each gathering where he is invited in. Our witness to this is the starting point, not just for Christ's ministry, but for our own journey. Jesus takes each of us by the hand, raising us out of death and into life, baptizing us into resurrection. We have that promise. In the Gospel readings of these past two weeks, today's and last week's, we are given to see the authority of Jesus, authority over hopelessness, evil, and death. Jesus wields the power of God Almighty, and he has set himself up to do the Father's will. Jesus tells us in verse 38, he came to proclaim the gospel message that he still does each time someone opens their Bible to seek him, to grow closer to him, to find comfort in him, to grow in and into the grace that is his. Today's gospel reminds us that the story of Jesus is always on the move. And if we are good listeners, good learners, good partakers, good teammates, we will not remain who or what we are. We will move where the story of the gospel takes us where, if we allow him, Jesus will take us. Grace wins the day in the healing power of God's forgiveness. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 We stand and sing uh, hymn number 617, We Come to You for Healing, Lord, and we'll sing verses 1, 4, and 5.
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need, and for those on our hearts this morning. Those that can't come to church because of the weather. Robert Mitchell, Georgia Schaefer, my brother-in-law, John. The call committee for Emmanuel Lutheran Church that we may be given a shepherd. My sister-in-law, Judy Schaefer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, for all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For creation, for insects in the grass, clouds on the mountaintops, for cattle, and the rainwater they drink, for the humility, for the humility to take our place among all creatures of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, states and county, countries, for school officials and CEOs, that in times of trial, fear, or hopelessness, they find freedom in service to those most in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by debt, for those struggling with chronic pain or other sicknesses, for those exhausted from overwork or stress, and for all who cry out to you, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this congregation, for outreach and ministries centered here and visitors, for ministries of companionship and support, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the members of our newly formed call committee. Guide them in their work to bring us a pastor to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us all join in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. We uh, have our offering plate prominently placed in the back, and we encourage good stewardship here at Emmanuel. We now join in our offering song. We give the but thine own.
O God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care, and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. God the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. 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 Let's sing our closing hymn, which is correct in the regular size bulletin and on the hymn board, but is incorrect on in the large print. So it is hymn number 886, Over a Thousand Tongues to Sing. There's six verses, Steve. How many do you want to do? Four.